So what's going on, everybody? I was hoping to show you guys the commercials from Apple and Samsung. Apple's commercial, which received a lot of flack over the last week, and then Samsung's commercial, which was just tastefully done. I'm not going to be able to show you the Apple commercial when I tried to upload the video. YouTube automatically um, blocked it. So I have to remove that. But you will be able to watch the Samsung video. You can still see the Apple video online in certain places. So go ahead and look for it. I'm not going to tell you where. But you can find it and um, enjoy the rest of the show. You are now tuned into the Mogabar Show. What's going on, everybody? Gabe here, host of the Mogabar Show. This is a special offshoot called the Weekly Catch Up. I'm going to try to check, catch you up on all things uh, tech, business, society, whatever I want to talk about. Today, I want to speak about something that basically has been in the news for the last several weeks and going back a couple of years, but I'm just now going to talk about him. CZ, uh, I'm going to kill his name, so I'm not going to actually say I'm just going to call him CZ, the former CEO of Binance, the founder and still the largest shareholder, was sentenced to four months for violating money laundering protocols. So people were upset. They thought he was going to get a lot more, but he got four months. They're like, well, it's not fair. Sam Bankman Freed got 25 years. Let's be realistic. Sam Bankman Freed probably should have gotten more. He was convicted of fraud, stealing from his lenders and customers, whereas CZ was not doing any of that. Binance was completely liquid, still liquid, still in operation, still doing business. There was no risk of anything. He was able to pay his fines with no problems. I'm not a CZ apologist. It's just the facts. He got four months, he got 25 years. One was for not having the policies in place to make sure money laundering protocols were being followed. The other one was stealing. A thief is a thief. On the FTX topic, um, this week, John Ray Rogers, John Rogers Ray, I forgot his name, but basically he was the guy that took over for Enron after it collapsed, if you guys famously remember that from the early 2000s. And he took over FTX filed for bankruptcy, has been doing what he does best and trying to make customers and the victims of this fraud whole. And he is on the verge of doing that. Basically, they anticipate that customers will get 100% of what they invested. Now, to be clear, that is 100% of what they invested and what it was worth on the day that they, were fi that they filed for bankruptcy in 2022, not what Bitcoin is worth now. So they're not going to get that value. They will never recoup that lost value, what it could have sort of appreciated at. They're going to always be limited to that. And then the worst one is back then when it looked dire that they weren't going to be able to recoup anything, there were a group of people that sold their their claim. Basically, if I lost, I don't know, $100,000 in FTX and if I invested, if I put in $100,000 and I lost that money with the collapse and bankruptcy, companies were there, whatever, I don't know, hedge funds and other companies saying, hey, we'll buy this from you. You know, you're not going to see as much as $100,000. we will give you $20,000. And people took those deals, unfortunately, because they needed the money. They were in a crunch and it's understandable. Now those people sort of lose out and the people that bought those claims are going to really be well off because they're going to be made whole, more than whole, really. So, you know, there's that. Where did the money come from? So many different places. There were properties that FTX bought, they liquidated. There was the investment in Anthropic, which turned out to be a really good investment. Um, once Google, Salesforce, and Amazon invested in Anthropic, that early investment from FTX really went sky high, and they were able to cash that out. And they're going to be able to basically make all of the customers whole. Now, there's different levels there's customers and then there's investors investors are screwed they're always going to go for the customers first the creditors first those are the people that are going to sort of come out on top uh, not on top excuse me but those are the people that are going to be made whole first they're the priority not the investors or the shareholders so if you owned stock in ftx as an employee or options sorry you screwed. So that's sort of one thing. The other thing is sort of the trial. Everybody knows Frank, Sam Bankman Freed sent us to 25 years and everybody is going to start saying, you know, about his appeal because he's appealing. People think like, well, now he has a chance to get out because people were made whole. No, 
this doesn't negate the fact that he stole the money. He wasn't supposed to use the money for those things. He wasn't supposed to buy private jets, which they bought too. He wasn't supposed to buy property, which they had many of in the Bahamas. He wasn't supposed to invest in Anthropic, actually, even though they did and it sort of worked out. But he wasn't supposed to do that with that money. That wasn't the purpose of the money. And, you know, like I think the the judge at his trial said it best, if finding money doesn't change anything, because at the end of the day, if you go to Vegas with money that you stole and you win money, you still stole the money to begin with. You're still a thief. There's a lot there. I don't anticipate his sentence being reduced in any capacity. It doesn't lend merit to what he did or said. He was still wrong. So, you know, there's that. Um, You know, the other thing, talking about another imprisoned ex-CEO, ex-darling Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos fame, you know, was sentenced to 11 years a couple of years ago, had it reduced by two years for good behavior, had it reduced by another few months. You know, there's people that think she shouldn't have it reduced. Apparently, they're fl- they're following all of their, you know, court procedures or, you know, jailhouse procedures in terms of, you know, how they adjust these sentences. Is it fair? Honestly, we will never know. There's really no way to know who makes the decisions and how they're basing the decisions. We're not in there. We don't see the good behavior. So we just have to sort of go with that. And and that's it. Now let's talk about Apple. Apple's been behind the eight ball since this whole generative AI thing craze started in, you know, October, November of 2022. And everybody's been waiting to hear what Apple's going to do. Apple's been in talks now to, you know, merge with uh, Baidu, not merge, to use Baidu in China. They've been talking about using Gemini, Google's AI here in the US and supposedly talking to OpenAI. There's been so many talks. Nobody knows what Apple is going to do. They do believe that this is probably going to be a stopgap until they can get their AI up to speed. And, you know, I think everybody's looking forward to that. Apple is notoriously never first to the market, but always best when they do finally come out. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. But along the notes of Apple, one thing that they did do wrong, one misstep that they had is an ad that they just came out with. And let me see if I can sort of pull this out because this was one of those things where you don't expect missteps from Apple, but this was a misstep. Let's see if I can pull this up for you. A lot of people, like they caught so much flack for that. A lot of people were pissed at them because it was like, well, what you're trying to say is that AI is going to, you know, replace people, replace musicians, replace creatives, replace artists, which is, of course, something that people are adamantly against. You know, you can't replace it. I, for one, agree. I think AI is going to do a lot of things, especially in the terms of data analytics. But when you get into the creative field, there's going to be many things that it's not always going to be able to do. One thing that I like from this ad is that it gave ammunition to another company to sort of come out with an ad of their own countering this. And I just think it was so well done. And let's take a look at this. Creativity cannot be crushed. I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, that is just so freaking true. Samson just hit the you know the nail on the head with that one. Basically, it's a it's such a shot across the bow in terms of Apple. I love to see ad wars. I still remember the '90s Pepsi versus Coke. I picked Coke in the taste test challenge. They never aired it. Look it up. But I love to see this. I can't wait to see what Apple is going to do next. Um, in terms of their ads, because they have such a creative team, you know, they're not going to basically just let this go. And I don't mean let this go as in they're going to come back at Samsung. I just mean they're going to come back even better than before. They have such an amazing creative machine behind them that you just know it's going to happen. So 
Let's stay tuned and let's watch to see what happens.